ta manuhini tuarangi nau mai piki mai na rau mai. Nau mai koutou ki te papa tongarewa tō tātou whare i rungi te kaupapa ki te whakawhai ti nei tātou i te pōra. O e norā, ka te reatu nei te tuku aroha ki o tātou aitu o komeni atu ki te pō. Ara tēnā ko te araki, ko te tipua, te hau tipua, tērā rangatira nui nei, a Nelson, ko ni rātou nei, ki tō pai. Nō reina me pehe te kōrero, mōna, me tōna whāna. Haere atu koe te rangatira, ko whawhai koe te whawhai nui, ko mauhere tēnei ngā te wāroa mō te aha te take, o te whai i te rangatiratanga o taone o te tangata. Nō reira, haere, haere, haere kutu rā. Ko e nora, o ki ora mai ki a tātou, ko tēnā te pō, nau mai te ao, ti hei mau. Koutou, kei ngā mana, kei ngā kai māngai, o te kāwanatanga o Brazil, ngā tari kāwanatanga, ngā hoa, koutou katoa, wahara manei, Whakarewa tēnei poka poka nau mai tuki mai harapa. Ko anoa te, good evening. It's a privilege for Te Papa to be, to host the launch of this groundbreaking publication, Ngā Kupu nō Pārehi 19, Ngā Huria Iwi Taketake, text from Brazil 19 Indigenous Cultures. In my mihi to everyone, I acknowledge all those present tonight, and also acknowledge those that have passed beyond the, uh, beyond the veil. In particular, to a visionary leader who championed the right for freedom, democracy, and the dignity and respect of people. He was a role model and advocate for indigenous peoples throughout the world, and for Māori and Aotearoa New Zealand. He was an icon and beacon that stood for democratic justice, reconciliation, and empowering people to choose their own destinies. <coughs> Mandela's influence and legacy will long be remembered e madiba hari atu nga o tēnā te pōna o mai te ao. This bilingual collection of essays about the indigenous people of Brazil is surely one of a kind. Originally published in Portuguese for a local audience, it is now being produced in English and now te reo Māori in recognition of our two official languages here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and as a platform for our indigenous peoples to build on. Before introducing, we have a few speakers who will speak tonight. I firstly would like to acknowledge the Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil, His Excellency Eduardo Guadilone and his wife Diva, for inviting us all here tonight. And the staff of the Brazilian Embassy, who work behind the scenes to make this launch possible, in particular, Karina Shaw, who is the Embassy's cultural attaché, Tena. Te Papa has a long-standing relationship with the Brazilian Embassy, We've worked together on the Latin American Film Festival and a variety of cultural performances and events that are always well attended and very popular. It's an association that we enjoy immensely and we look forward to continue that in the future. We'd also like to welcome Dr. Marta do Amaral Azevedo from Brazil, who is an anthropologist, demographer, and a former president of the National Indian Foundation. <coughs> The foundation was instrumental in producing all three versions of the book. I'd also like to pay special mention to Denise Almao, the first ambassador of New Zealand to Brazil, Ana Ribeiro Bizarra, Bezerra, Secretary of the Brazilian Embassy, ambassadors, high commissioners, and other members of the diplomatic corps at MFAT, uh, to all our government departments, Te Puni Kōkini, uh, Toi Aotearoa, Kouta Katoa, Mau Mai Haramai. I'd also like to pay a special uh, mention to a person I've known for a long time, Ratu Tibbal, who translated the English version of these texts into Te Reo Māori. It's a tremendous <coughs> achievement. The Māori Language Commission Te Tauru Whiri Te Reo Māori has played a valuable role in assisting the Embassy, and I'd just like to acknowledge the, the chair, Chairperson of the Māori Language Commission, Ere Mahenare Tenakwe, the Chief Executive, uh, Glenis Philip Barbara, no my Piki Maharamai. Tonight is much about a celebration of language and culture and a first step in developing stronger connections and relationships between our indigenous peoples. We are honoured to have you all here tonight 
and uh, including we have the Director of the Māori Policy of the, Māori, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Martin Wikaira. We have TPK, Toi Aotearoa. Uh, we have staff from Victoria University. We we'll all come here, all of us, to support not only the book launch, but also the long-term vision of developing relationships between our Indigenous cultures. On behalf of Te Papa Tongarewa, as the new Kaihautu of Te Papa, we welcome you here this evening and congratulate everyone who has been involved in this unique and exciting project. Nō reira koutou rā, nō mai, piki mai, rarau mai, tahuti mai, te anā koutou. We have an exhibition taking uh, in Ngaitā Manuhiri and Tūranga Nui Akiwa, and they took some significant time back to Tūranga Nui Akiwa and celebrating tribal identity back in, in, in Gisborne. So, uh, <coughs> the first speaker I just want to, um, to invite, since arriving in Aotearoa, New Zealand last year, His Excellency Eduardo Barilone has made a personal commitment to learn more about Māori culture and language. He attended a Te Atharangi course, a course at Victoria University and community classes at Wellington High School. In the foreword to the book, he acknowledges that, quote, there is no doubt that our indigenous groups have deeply contributed to what Brazilian and New Zealand cultures today. Uh, without any further ado, I'd like to invite His Excellency and the Brazilian Ambassador Eduardo Bandolone to share his views about the great potential for cultural interaction between the indigenous peoples of our two nations on the launching of this book tonight. Kia ora. He honore, he hororia, ki te atua, he maunga ronga, ki te senua, he wakaro pai ni nga tanga ta katoa, amin. He a ha te mea nui o te ao, he tanga ta, he tanga ta, he tanga ta. Te nga ko te hangatira a pata, i whanau mai a hao ki San Paulo o Parihi, ka tipo mai i heira, Ko Atlantic Forest te maunga, ko tie te te awa, ko Gradilone te iwi, ko Eduardo toko enua, e mahi ana au te Brazilian Embassy, ko te mangai o Kawanatanga o Parihi au, do heira te na koutou, te na koutou, te na koutou katoa. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, local authorities, Maori representatives, members of the diplomat corps, my embassy staff, friends of the Brazilian community, reports, reporters of the Maori present, colleagues of my Maori classes. Ehoana. I thank very much the Papas Kaihau to Arapata Hakiwai to preside over this ceremony. And anthropologist and demographer Marta Azevedo, professor of the prestigious University Unicamp and ex-president of the National Foundation for Indigenous Peoples of Brazil for having accepted our invitation to be tonight with us for this launching ceremony. And tomorrow at our embassy, 
to give the keynote address in our seminar on Maori and Brazilian native cultures, probably the first event of this kind ever realized. Tomorrow, as her counterpart in the seminar, to reply to her address and to talk about Maori culture, highlighting differences and points in common in several aspects covered by her or treated in more length in the book we are launching today, we will be honored to have the Papas Kaumatua Shani Tehuki. As you know, Hangatira Shani has a high reputation for his knowledge of Maori culture. He is also an artist and has a lifelong commitment to the maintenance and preservation of the Tanya and the Rio Maori. Martin Vicaida, Director of Maori Policy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign and Trade Relations of New Zealand, will also talk to us at the seminar. There will be photographs, video clips, and even live Brazilian Maori music performed by, by Alder Rezeng, and New Zealand multi-instrumentalist Matthew Tehuki, who will, who will, for the first time, mix ancestral and modern music from Aotearoa and Brazil. And surely we will have Brazilian drinks and meals. I would have too many people to thank for the materialization of this launching ceremony and of tomorrow's seminar. Sorry not to mention all their names, but please be assured of our deepest gratitude and acknowledgement for your support. I surely could not let it pass without mentioning Hato Tibo, the competent and devoted translator of the book, who was recommended by the Maori Language Commission, whose chairman Erima Henari and chief executive officer Glenis Philip Barbara, we have the honor house to have here tonight. Hato Tibo will shortly tell us briefly about the main challenges he faced during the translation. It was a hard job. If I had to summarize the history of this project, I would say that everything started with a cultural ceremony organized in 2001 by Ambassador Denise Aumau at the inauguration of the New Zealand Embassy in Brasilia, which Maori and Brazilian Indians performed, respectively, a haka and a cry of war in the presence of then Prime Minister Helen Clark and then Brazilian First Lady Ruth Cardoso. Dear Ambassador Mao, thank you for being here tonight. Thanks also to former Ambassador to Brazil, Mark Trainer for your presence and your continued support to our embassy's activities. 11 years after that bicultural performance, I made acquaintance during an event at the New Zealand Embassy in my country with bridge expert in Brazilian Indian art, Sandra Wellington, who had been for two terms the director of the Indigenous Peoples Memorial in Brazil. We then discussed ways to improve the reciprocal knowledge of Brazil's and New Zealand's native communities. When I suggested to my colleague, George Furnese, head of the cultural department of our Minister of Foreign Relations, <coughs> that a book written by Sandra on Brazilian Indian arts be translated into Maori, he counter proposed that we translate it instead a more ample publication that his department has had especially prepared to be distributed during the Rio Plus 20 Environment and Summit held in Brazil in 2012. And then we started the real hard work. I talked first about the project with Minister of Education, Heke Parata, and her husband, Vida Gardner. Then to ministers, Peter Sharpless and Chris Feelism. Then to Michael Holyhan and his team at the Tripapa Museum, to the board of the Waitangi Tribunal, to my teachers of Maori at the Victoria University, the Wellington High School, and the Teatarangi at the Petoni Primary School, and surely to Marty Waikaira from the MFAD, and to the current ambassador to New Zealand, Brazil, Jeffrey McAllister. 
and we're very grateful for their advice. In March 2013, President, President Dilma Rousseff gifted Prime Minister John Key with a prototype of the publication, with only the four words and two chapters translated. And here we are today launching the Holy Translated Book. Again, I have to thank the Papa and its staff who realized the importance of this event and put their best to organize a compatible ceremony. In particular, I'm thank you, thankful for to Caroline Robert, Roberts Thompson, Hine Randy Barn, Susan Superville, Alana Bicknell, and Mara Mangluck Mold. Let me just conclude expressing my hope that this ceremony, with no ostentation but full of evocations of our best values and traditions, will mark not only a book launching, but a real beginning of a meeting between the two cultures that are at the foundation of both Brazil and New Zealand. Koteheu Aroha, Koteheu Mihi Tenei, Koteiwi o Brasil, Kiakoto o Aotearoa. Kiora, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, now it gives me uh, pleasure to uh, call upon the translator of the book, uh, Ratu Tuho Tipo. Uh, Ratu is a native speaker uh, of Te Reo Ngāti Pro. He has an extensive uh, publishing and translation experience and deep knowledge of Māori culture. Um, I have a long relationship with Ratu. Uh, uh, my mother-in-law is Ratu's sister, was Ratu's sister. Uh, Ratu is our brother, used to work here as our um, iwi lies in person and our translator and uh, we have um, Waho passed away a few years back and now we have Waho's son, Paura, who is our trans uh, translator here. So uh, a strong tradition with Te Reo Māori and uh, so it gives me great pleasure to invite Ratu to talk about and share some of the experiences. Kia ora. Well, I'm not too sure where to start. I think I was reprimanded by uh, Karina. She said, I want you to do this. I want you to enjoy yourself up there. Well, I'm going to enjoy myself up here. Uh, as an interpreter, I get to know very few people. I just get to see miles and miles and miles of text. Not only that, I get to create new language, especially in this particular rather complex situation. Uh, you see, anything that departs from the norm is jargon, total jargon. And I think only a week ago, we had the issue of jargon uh, on television. And uh, what was promoted was the idea of civil language. And I take my hat off to, uh, to the early Jesuit priests inside uh, Brazil. And now we're talking about the 15 to 1600s, and I think that makes that extraordinary that they can speak in such simple terms. Now, I'm partially academic, and therefore I'm excused. Complicated, very difficult to understand, but nevertheless, lots of hope and lots of inspiration. So this, this project was indeed a challenge. It's a good thing I was accompanied by a good friend of mine, and um, she came with me on the evening to hold my hand, because I was extremely nervous sitting with, uh, with the ambassador and Diva. It was a very difficult time for me, quite nervous. She held my hand and, and kept me silent, on track, and informed. <laughs> so that's my, uh, 
uh, I thank Rewa Paiwai for that. Um, and it was a special evening in as much as she and I had uh, organized to meet. And I had to terminate her invitation and say to her, sorry, we'll have to join the ambassador tonight and forego our uh, private conversation. I'm not too sure whether I gained or, or lost on the occasion, but I knew that at the end of the day, I had a difficult task ahead of me. When I opened the book, I was completely shocked. Uh, <laughs> because there were so many new words, I had to really think about where I was traveling. So I may as well have been lost in the Amazon jungle for all it's worth. Uh, because that's how I felt when I looked at all this text and uh, imagined how I was going to translate it. Well, translated I did. So here I am today. Yes, I will enjoy myself, Karina. I'll enjoy myself tonight. I have no choice because it's been a hard journey. And when you've had a hard journey, you deserve the best drink and the best friends and the best associations. So the question there is, what am I doing here? And what is the future of that book? Well, let me tell you that the future of that book is in fact about you. It's about every citizen in this country. And they ought to take the example from Eduardo and that is this, that he's taken time out to learn real. He goes to classes every week. And I take my hat off to him for that enthusiasm that he has inside of him. And we need that enthusiasm in all of us here in Aotearoa today. Because I think that's a vision for Aotearoa into the future. It's the real. It is your real. It's not exclusively Maori. It cannot be. And it must grow. So he has given us a vision and a challenge. And I believe that, it's an, that it is an amazing challenge. And I want to see more exchanges between our two countries. And I expect that our government should look forward to advancing our students into the world of Brazil. There to learn because it is, I was shocked. I knew nothing about Brazil. But now I know a hell of a lot more. I can tell you a hell of a lot more about Brazil tonight. But I won't, I won't draw it out. I'll leave that for you to come and taste tomorrow. And I can tell you, the taste will be sweet. So I'm inviting you to come and enjoy a moment. Just the moment in time that I'll tell you a bit about Brazil and how excited I am about my readings. Nareira, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou, kia ora tato koutou.
Convention is here to march this year the Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff presented a prototype of the bilingual book to our Prime Minister John Key. It affirmed the Brazilian government's support for our two official languages and its intention, and the ambassador spoke clearly about this, was to build and strengthen relationships and bonds between uh, both of our countries. This important project wouldn't be possible without the support and relationship of many people. And I just want to acknowledge the uh, the total the total for the Maori the Maori Language Commission. And in saying that, I'd like to invite the chairman, the chairperson, Ed Mahir, to come up and speak to us. Kia ora. something, having heard my Maturatu's uh, summary of his journey tonight, that I'll be pushing over the coming months uh, so that we have some fruition to the relationship that began all those years ago when those two jumped that ship. So thank you very much for your kind words tonight. It is a matter of great moment that a foreign sovereignty, that a foreign nation would print um, and publish in the indigenous language of another country. 
and for that we are greatly and deeply honoured and a special mihi to the government of Brazil for this initiative in supporting Te Reo Māori. You will see in the census data released in the middle of last week that Te Reo Māori is not a living language, it's in trouble. One of the main issues as to why it's in trouble, apart from the fact that Māori won't speak it themselves in their homes to their children and to their grandchildren, is that there is a dearth and a lack of printed material that can be used as resources in schools, in wānanga and in universities. So this taonga will go a long way to addressing that issue. And I wanted to pay a special tribute to my Matuaratu for this wonderful work, his wonderful work in translating this wonderful taonga for our children and our grandchildren in the many years to come. It is through the production of taonga like this that Te Reo will live and will survive. It will be a resource for them to learn new <coughs> words, albeit Ngāti Pro words, <laughs> but learn also about other, other people and the way that they live. And see, in fact, that the way they live and the way we live has many similarities and many commonalities. So thank you, Your Excellency, uh, your good lady, and the people of your embassy and the people of Brazil for a wonderful tama that you have given not only to the people gathered here tonight but to the people of New Zealand and Te Reo Māori, Te Ngākwe, Te Ngākūrla, Te Ngākūta, Te Ngātata. When the Portuguese man lived with, amongst us you know this Vincent Peters, we've all got terrible voices, so I won't sing. <laughs> Speaker Martin Mikaira, who's the director of the Māori policy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Manitou Aotearoa, to say a few words. I carry this glass not because I am thirsty, but just to remind us that this is supposed to be a celebration, and also to remind me myself that this has to be very short and very succinct. <laughs> well, you know. Ambassador and your lovely lady, I'm going to do a Tamadu or Brazil to you all. A very, very special thank you. I'm going to hook you on to you who have been named, and there are many of you, and I'm not going to go through, the, through you all. But simply just say, this book. Among the many things we have heard is about, Dr. Marta, it is about connections. 
It is about connecting through language. And when you get the opportunity, as I did, you are going to find so many similarities, you're going to find so many differences. But at the end of the day, you are going to be hearing what the ambassador said when he began his speech. And he said, What is the greatest thing of all? He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. It is people, it is people, it is people. And if this book is nothing else, it connects people. But for we who live in the southern end of the globe, I want to say to our own people as well as to you in Brazil, our endeavour is to be global. To be global is to understand the pathway that you are seeking and the pathway you take. But more so, is to understand the place when you get there. In this sense, Ambassador, we thank you for allowing us the privilege of putting our language as a signpost for all of us to walk towards that future for we here in New Zealand and for your indigenous people and indeed the people of Brazil. So, Nā Mihi Nunu I want to at this, take, at this stage on behalf of uh, John Allen, who couldn't be here, to thank Jared Van Bohem and Lear, uh, over there, Jared, raise your glass, who is our, uh, from our senior leadership team at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and others who are here for that as well. Because that is our challenge. And sir, you are helping us with that challenge. I'm going to say to you, I'm raising this glass to myself. Uh, Naji Pro, it is my waiter. <laughs> and it goes somewhere like this. Oh Lord, it's so good to have wine. <laughs> to say that you're here on time. So when you have finished sending the message, can I say to you all, enjoy it. Kia ora tata. And after that, we're going to invite Dr. Marta do Amaral uh, Azevedo to explain the significance of uh, a Brazilian ceremonial closing chant, which will complete the, uh, the formal part of the rituals for this, for this evening. <coughs> I have the privilege of undertaking a blessing um, for the resource that we have um, here tonight. I'm Te Hereke Ke Hiramuni and I'm the manager for repatriation. Tonight I've been invited to do the blessing, so the way we would conduct the blessing is initially we would do an offering to Tangaroa, a more traditional blessing. Um, and that will start with the Tanga Puro, and we will also finish with the Tanga Puro. After the Tanga Puro, then we'll sing um, the Himene He Honore, and after that, then we'll complete with um, a Whakamoe Te Kia Ehoa. 
Um, I just want to make one statement. Um, I wasn't originally brought up in the, the Māori language, but I have the privilege of having one of my school teachers here tonight. This is actually Ngāti Pirau. Um, but I actually um, chose to um, speak our reo from Wanganui and Taranaki. And um, although Ngāti Pirau is a great foundation for our reo, um, I do offer to our ambassador that if you really want to learn Māori, learn the dialect of um, Wanganui and Taranaki. <laughs> No reina, te pirasta. Amazonia and they do this 
job to do this research, uh, three years research with the, all the students, all the children uh, from this people, this Tuyuka, Tapinopona people. And they re register in a CD all the rich, their rituals and songs and dances. And this last music we will hear is the celebration of the closing of this uh, meeting uh, between different peoples of, from this region and they made this uh, ceremonial dialogue uh, remembering all that they done, all the myths, all the ancestors and they are uh, telling goodbye and keep open all the, the paths to maintain the dialogue between these different peoples. That's, thank you very much.